Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy Lee Jr., and joining me is Imran the Don Khan. Howdy, Blessing. Imran, how's it going? It is not incredibly hot today. Yes, that is, honestly, that is the biggest thing. Uh, if you're living in, in the Bay Area, this last weekend was legitimately one of the hottest weekends I've experienced since moving here. It was incredible how hot it got. And also, we got thunderstorms out of nowhere. Yeah, so that, that, that possible that was earthquakes, really cool. too? I don't know about the earthquakes. The thunderstorm was, like, cool to look at. Like, literally, it's a, it was a storm without any rain. And it was just, like, seeing lightning in the distance with nothing there. I think it rained for, like, 15 seconds at one point. But it was a very cool thing to see. Yeah. It's weird. No, it's it weird. That's not. That's not like a normal thing for this area. Why is my camera moving? It was very strange because I the thunder the thundering was happening in the middle of the night and I was sleeping and I legit was woken up by the thunder and it was one of those things where historically thunder is not like a scary thing to me because I grew up in the Midwest and like there 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 was a uh, thunderstorms all the time and so like I don't freak out necessarily about thunder but something about living here and and now being used to not having thunderstorms and being woken up. By thunder happening and no rain happening, something about that shook me to where I was like, "Ooh, this seems, this seems ominous." I don't know how I feel about all this. Was it it seems kind of scary. How how is it finally experiencing what we were always complaining about, where it's like, "Oh, it's like ninety degrees and it's unbearable," and everyone in the chat's always like, "Ooh, it's one hundred and fifty here," or it's like, so it's it's also different. like it's one hundred and fifty there where you guys have air conditioning." Yeah, you guys are yeah. ready and prepared for it. That's There's... that's the thing. Like I I lived for I lived in Nigeria for a couple of years growing up, and like of course in Nigeria it is very hot. Also in Nigeria, my house had air conditioning, and that made a world of difference. Living in San Francisco, where none of the buildings have air conditioning, legit makes days like this last weekend unbearable. Like yeah, I was actually moving moving over some of my stuff because I'm I'm in the process of moving over to a new apartment, and I happened to be moving on Saturday, which was the day that was the, the hottest. hottest. Day. And the par- apartment I'm moving into, I'm on the top floor. And Ooh. I got to the top floor, and I got to my apartment, uh, uh, my actual apartment. Opened the door, and just a heat wave just engulfed me in a way where I was like, "How? How do we let this happen? It's, how do we let crazy. places get this hot without AC?" Because, well, because it only happens like a week or two a year, but yeah. it's just also like for some reason, I guess people were like, "Hey, to save money, let's not properly insulate anything," and so it traps God. like. It makes it yes. so that the houses turn into an oven. All the heat can come in, and it doesn't come out. Oh, it's terrible. Yes. Especially mm-hmm. if you're on the top floor, which was a terrible experience. Yeah. So I can't wait to live there. Yeah, I'm from Georgia, and I like, I know what it's like to be really hot, but you're only hot between the car and whatever building you're getting into. That's it. Yeah, that sounds yeah, exactly. It's like you're you hot all the time. Uh, blessing. One thing it. that you should invest in is like several fans and just put them on your windows to like create like a mm. wind tunnel in your house. That helps with us. Dude, you can't on... see. I literally have two fans to the left of me. I can't. Because I've, I've, yeah, you can't even. I mean, it's one. This microphone's great, Kevin. You got it for me, and I appreciate that. <laughs> two, the fa- the fans aren't that loud. Oh, okay. um, but I'm yeah, turning like, my fan on now. I got a system going. I like it. I can't hear your. Are you, is well, your fan no, on? I, I can't, I can't get my hand on it. I can't get my hand. You'll hear it. It's loud. You hear it? Oh yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, it's 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 a little but guy, but you, it works. Does well. it give you the good breeze though? Oh my god, you can see my hair just flowing in it. <laughs> flowing, looking like a lion. Kevin, Iran, enough about how hot it is in San Francisco. Let's talk about Death Loop being delayed. More on Epic versus Apple and trouble at Rocksteady because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash games, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily to be a part of the show at the patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping dc fandom is happening this saturday and we're treating it like greg miller's personal e3 greg and the kind of funny crew will be on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games all day long reacting to panels for suicide squad kill the justice league uh, wb montreal's game that they're announcing which is obviously batman but for some reason they, they they've done the weird marketing tactic 
where they've talked about it for a year and not said anything about it at the same time. And it's incredible. I've not seen any other publisher do that. Uh, so kudos to UWB Montreal. Uh, but yeah, we're reacting live to that. Uh, the Snyder Cut and every other DC movie that DC movie that all starts right here at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. So don't miss it. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Muhammad Muhammad and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by DoorDash, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Baker's Dozen. Starting with our number one, Imran, what would you say if I told you that another launch title got delayed? Depends on the launch title. There's some what if I told I you sob openly? What if I told you it was Deathloop? I will sob openly. Same because that was uh, one of the ones I was excited or most excited about. Yes, and I'm right there with you. Uh, story number one: Deathloop has been delayed. Uh, this comes from Deathloop on Twitter. They tweeted out uh, a letter to the community and an update on Deathloop in an image that reads: "We've made the decision to move the launch date of Deathloop to Q2 2021." Our ambition for Deathloop is to deliver a signature arcane game that takes you to a never-before-seen place in a stylish new world. At the same time, the health and safety of everyone at Arcane Leon, or Lion, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, I'm going to say Leon, uh, Arcane Leon remains our top priority. As we've adjusted to work from home, we found that delivering this new and exciting experience at the polish and quality level that defines both an arcane game and a true next-gen experience is taking longer than normal. This extra time will allow our team to bring Deathloop's world to life with as much character and fun as you've come to expect from our team. While we know this is the right decision for Deathloop, we share your disappointment and apologize for making, making you wait even longer. Thank you for your support and, thank you for your support and excitement. Your, your positive feedback has helped fuel us as we continue to work uh, from the confines of our homes. We can't wait to share more details about Deathloop with you, so keep your eyes open for our next update coming soon. Arcane Leon. This makes sense, right? As COVID has been a thing and work from home has been a thing. And you've seen all the yeah. companies adjust adjusting. Like any delay that's happening at this point isn't as surprising because we all understand that like the world shifted. Um, yeah. but I'm I'm with you there that I'm kind of openly sobbing about this. This what this was one of this I would say in my top two of launch titles I was looking forward to. It was this and yeah. Miles Morales. And yeah, I'm I was still on the Miles Morales is coming out. I was going to come home with this and Miles Morales and be like, all right, cool. I got like a game that maybe is a little bit smaller, but I'm very into like aesthetically and gameplay wise and a game that is new and interesting and like will be probably yeah. fantastic to play. But From this, Arcane. Did you play yes. Dishonored? I did. I, I played Dishonored. Like I played the first one when it launched. I played two recently. And did, so you, I, I, did you enjoy it? I, I enjoyed them both. Yeah, I think they're I, they're both fantastic games. And this seems like it takes the ideas that didn't quite land with me with Dishonored and like makes them either less important or entirely dismissive. Yes. And I'm I'm actually with you there. Where Dishonored is a game Dishonored 2 specifically is a game that I, I really loved, but I'm not necessarily big into the aesthetic of whale punk. Like that's not that that's not <laughs> mm -hmm. the thing about the game that appealed to me. Everything else about the game appealed to me. I love the gameplay. I love the um immersive simness of it. Like the idea that you can go in and tackle the game how you want as far as do you want to go loud? Do you want to go stealth and and the different abilities and how that affects the different approaches you can take in the game. Like that design philosophy is something that I'm a big fan of, and Deathloop aesthetically is pleasing to me. The characters seem cool. I like the yeah. back and forth between the two main characters. Like everything about it, I'm all about. And yeah, if it takes them delaying it to make sure that it comes out in a state that uh, is good, then so be it. Like that's acceptable to me. I I agree. I I'm I'd rather the game be delayed than come out badly or like mm -hmm. them have to crunch to get it in there, but. I also feel like that game coming out at launch is that game's best chance to be like a huge hit. And I'm with you there. Who knows what Q2 2021 is going to look like? Maybe it's still kind of dire by then, but still like, like we were both saying, we, that was the launch game we were going to pick up. And yeah. I think a lot of people are, probably would have felt that way. So who knows what this ends up looking like? If you asked me a Shadow of Mordor would have been a huge game like years before it came out, I'd be like, no, that doesn't like Lord of the Ring games do fine, they just don't do well. I but it ended up selling super well. So maybe this still ends up being that big next gen showcase. I just, yeah, I, I maybe it just made my personal disappointment of it not coming out then, trying to translate to an industry analysis. But I just wish that, like, for its own sake, that it would have been able to come out at launch. Well, I think one of the reasons why 
this is like a little bit shocking uh, of it being delayed is that it was going to be a PlayStation launch title. Mm -hmm. Like it is an exclusive or a launch exclusive game to PlayStation that was going to come out at launch, which was going to bolster that library. And in a way, like Halo Infinite being delayed, was it last week or two weeks ago? Time is still a flat circle. Uh, with that delay, that probably lends more, I guess, leniency to how how much PlayStation launch titles probably could move if they need to. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure, like when Halo Infinite got delayed, and Arcane might have been having the conversations with PlayStation of like, hey, this isn't going to make it. Halo Infinite delay probably made them go like, all right, it's a bummer, but it's not dire. Like we 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 still have Miles Morales, we still have uh you know Buck Snacks and Playroom, and of course we're having our third parties with Assassin's Creed and other games. Like no. it's not gonna be dire if Deathloop gets gets. To delayed. be clear, we don't know that any of those games are actually coming out at launch. They've not said these games Fair. are gonna be day one for this. But system. you can assume. Yeah, you can assume for the most part. I I would assume I there's probably a lot of internal discussions happening at Sony. Being like, well, does, is does like let hypothetically is Ratchet coming to launch or is Spider Man coming to launch? We don't want two Insomniac games of that same yeah. day. Like, I mean, Ratchet's not going to be until like next year, though. Do you think? I think so. Did they not? Did they not give a year? Did they not say twenty twenty one? They did not. Okay, I'm still I'm still assuming it's not going to be launched. Yeah, I would still I would say twenty twenty one for sure. The only thing explicitly that we know is not launch is or of Sony's first party slate. I should say it's Horizon. It's Horizon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff, Demons, Ratchet, Miles Morales. Miles Morales at least has a target window of end of, uh, last quarter of this year. Yeah, yeah, holiday. So that could most likely is launch, but they've not said that yet. And I think they're they are probably still quite internally worried about like their own games slipping at this point. I would say if I was PlayStation, like you don't need to to beef up your launch that much. Like I don't I'm I'm always uh or for this console launch specifically, I've been of the mind that like historically console launches haven't been great if you're not Nintendo. Like mm -hmm. Nintendo is like the one company that always has a banger at launch for the most part. Maybe not with the Wii U, but like Breath of the Wild with the Switch, uh, Wii Sports, I guess with the Wii, uh, Mario 64 within with the N64, right? Like I can't remember. I can remember if Melee came out at launch with GameCube or not. But like generally, yeah, generally they have re Nintendo has really good launches, but PlayStation and Xbox, mostly PlayStation, because I know Xbox has had, has had Halo. On the PlayStation side, there's never really been a huge, like, big old launch exclusive that is, like, a, a system seller. Like, they never really have that at launch from the first party side. And I don't necessarily see there be, uh, being a reason this time around, especially now that Halo Infinite has been delayed, to, like, bolster up that launch library like that. Like, you don't necessarily need a Spider-Man and a Ratchet or a Spider-Man and a... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the, any God of War, even though God of War doesn't exist yet. Like, mm. you know, you don't ne you don't you don't necessarily need multiple heavy hitters. I think with Miles Morales and Astro and the indie games that you had announced at the PlayStation Five event, like you're pretty much good to go from there. Launch titles matter greatly in the lead up to launch and the day of launch, and then matter a lot less as you go further from it. So it's like, yes, like I, I'm sitting here thinking about launch, and I I have a decent knowledge of launch titles but mo you're right most of them don't actually very few launch titles are games that you will at the end of the generation go yeah this is one of the best games this generation or the best games yes. for this console and i think if you don't have anything then that becomes a problem like uh the n64 launch where it was mario 64 and pilot wings yeah you had one of the best games ever but also it was only two games launching a system and that like set a tone for the rest of that console on the other hand, the Switch, if it didn't launch with Breath of the Wild, it didn't have that really amazing first year, probably would not have gotten the momentum to keep selling that well. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, like, we, talking hypotheticals, we can disagree about, like, what, what direction it would have gone all day. But I do think that you do need something for people to come home and, like, bring home. That's like, I, I know Mike and them talked about it in the X-Cast uh, this past weekend, but that's kind of the kind of thing that I kind of worry about the Xbox One with, of like, or Xbox Series X. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, Halo is not going to make or break it, depending on when it comes out, but you do want something for people to be able to play, and usually third parties pick up that slack, and I don't think they're really doing that well, or doing, doing a good slack picking up job uh, yeah. this winter. Yeah, this time around, I feel like yeah, there is less of that 
focus on third parties as as opposed to the last generation where like i remember i remember coming into ps4 being like oh man this watchdogs game looks like it's about to change the world and watchdogs came out and it's like all right this is a very fine game and um, also but like, the late past launch it was je- the first- oh yeah it was the late past launch wasn't it yeah but yeah, like this time around, this seems like there are a lot there are there are a lot less watchdogs, even though we literally do have a watchdogs coming out this fall. Um, and a lot more like, hey, yeah, like th- th- we do have an Assassin's Creed, we do have a bunch of indie games uh that like are not necessarily confirmed for launch, but like we have an idea that Bug Snacks is gonna be launch window, right? Like that that they said 2020 for that. They said 2020 for um God, I can't like say all of them off the top of my head, but like quite a few of those PlayStation indie games we know are coming out. I can't remember yeah. Jet the Far Shore is this year or not. Um, I suspect indie games are going to be less likely to be impacted by COVID because they're smaller teams or people who are probably already well used to working de- remotely together. Yeah. So like Arcane, they, they imply, or do they imply or directly say in the Dishonored, or not Dishonored, uh, Deathloop thing that yeah, COVID's a problem and yeah. we are not, we're not used to it. We're not used to working from home. And this like the diaspora of a larger studio is probably going to hurt them more than like, like the young horses, like the, the Bugs Max, the team. three person team, or like yeah. yeah, a team that is probably working from home anyway. You know, all yeah. things considered. So I, su- I suspect indie games are going to be the big like, what's the word? The big reason to buy a console, yeah. assuming those games are exclusive, which we don't really know for sure, but I'm guessing they are. Oh yeah, like a lot of the uh, I'm re- I'm referring specifically to the ones that were announced at the PlayStation event in June, yeah. and most of those, if not all of them, uh, are exclusive or at the very least timed exclusive. Like there's some sort of thing tied to pretty much most of them. Uh, on the topic though of exclusives and death loop and delays, Frank Furter writes in to patreon.com/slash kind of funny games just like you can and says, "Morning blessing to Imran. Death loop is the latest game to get to get the delay treatment in the shit storm that is 2020. While it's only a few months." Uh, that this leaves us with a legit ha- ha- hold up. While it's only a few months, this leaves us with a legit handful of new games coming out later this fall with the new console release. The few games I can think that will launch with the new consoles are uh, supposed to be Spider Man, Cyberpunk, and the new Assassin's Creed, which we didn't talk about Cyberpunk that much. And that's actually a good point to that it's gonna be timed around launch. Probably. Yeah, but there's a reason we don't talk about it it's because it's not a next gen game. Yeah, they, that's actually there's, a point. Next, there's an update coming at some point, but they've not like it could be a week, it could be the day those consoles arrive, it could be three months later. But yes. like when you buy Cyberpunk, it'll say Xbox One or PS4 on top of it. I have a few questions when it comes to these games and the console release. One, will any of these three games above get delayed into 2021? Two, do the delays of all the recent games take the pressure? Take pressure off consumers to buy to buy on day one when there are a few new games to play with their new console. And then three, will the new consoles be delayed as well? Not only due to production delays and the fact that we'll have uh, not only due to production delays and the fact that we'll we'll have a weak launch lineup. Thanks for all you do, Frank Furter. Three very different questions. We can tackle them in any order. I as don't, far, I don't think it. Cyberpunk or Assassin's Creed will get delayed. I think those games are locked. Those are. I, I say that, and I bet the second we end the show, it's going to be like, Cyberpunk delayed 2021. Yeah, because that's I what think, happens every single time. <laughs> I don't think those two games are, will get delayed. I think Spider-Man, if it if it's not in the polishing phase by now, I... I, I Yeah, I, I'm confident Spider-Man's 2020. I, I would bet that's the thing they started as soon as that last game was finished, and it should be like ready to go by the time that game launches. And if it's not ready to go now, I'm sure Sony's going to make sure it's ready to go. Out of out of the three games, Spider Man, Cyberpunk, and, and Assassin's Creed, I honestly see Cyberpunk is the one that's the most likely to get delayed into twenty twenty one. Um, one because like they've shown us before that they're not afraid to delay it. Two out of these three, I'd say that is the most ambitious one in terms of what you're doing with the systems and things that can go wrong in terms of bugs and, and things that would need technical fixing. Um, but then also like that's the one that I think is less is the least. Um, uh, bogged down in terms of the time the time frame it needs to come out like spider-man and miles morales that is being timed as a launch game and i think that game that game being delayed it's not the end of the world for the ps5 but that is a blow to the console launch and i'm and sony doesn't want that mm-hmm. um and so like that game that game is important right outside of just itself assassin's creed like assassin's creed comes out like clockwork uh at this point like it is uh um you know you're on you're on you're off you're on you're on you're off right and like they've they've hit that cycle pretty well for the last three entries three four entries and like assassin's creed historically i don't think has ever really 
seen a big push or a big delay since they've started started their consistent cycle. Like mm-hmm. if anything, they've 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 shifted structures of how they're going to come out, right? And they started taking years off after after being yearly, but they they've not necessarily deviated from a planned thing. And so, how would, how would you gauge your Assassin's Creed excitement level out of curiosity? I. So after playing Ghost of Tsushima, it actually skyrocketed. Historically, I am not as not an Assassin's Creed person. I played a few of them, and I just didn't. I was not vibing with them. And I know the newer Assassin's Creed games do a different thing than the older ones, which is like the main thing that is getting me somewhat interested. After playing Ghost of Tsushima, I was like, "Oh man, is I could I I apparently like open world games where you're just like going off a checklist more than I thought, you know? Because like that was that was the main thing about Assassin's Creed I wasn't into, like the idea of it's very formulaic and it is an open world ass open world game and you're doing you're going through the motions you're doing the thing it's the same thing every single time um yeah playing ghost of Tsushima is the thing that kind of opened my open up my i guess heart to it a bit that said as i've come down off of that ghost of Tsushima high i've also gotten i've also started to anticipate the next assassin's creed less knowing how busy of a fall it is like even just today we're gonna get to it later in new dates but with the nin, nin- uh, they're not calling it Nindies anymore. With the Indie World event, Nintendo announced a bunch of games that are out later today. And I'm like, ooh, I want to play Manifold Garden. I want to play um, uh, like Samurai Jack when that comes out. I want to play Mortal Shell because I have that downloading on my PS4 right now. I want to finish Persona 5 Royal. I want to play EA UFC 4 because I, I love the UFC UFC games. And like, I'm I'm at the point where I'm like, man, realistically, I'm not going to be able to do all the things I want to. And this fall with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that's a game that I am somewhat interested in, but not like all about. Like, I'm not Greg Miller who loves uh, Odyssey, right? Like, I'm just a person who's like, ooh, yeah, if I have time, I want to play that game. But I'm at the point now where I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have time if I'm being honest with myself. Yeah, I mean, I'm Assassin's Creed, I feel like that's a game I'm probably going to pick up and play. But I'm like, every time I look at footage of it, I'm like, this is fine. I'm, I, I I will play this when it is put in front of me. It's the equivalent of like that one place that has good food or decent food, but it's not amazing. You'll never go out of your way to get there. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of like okay, cool. Somebody brought this food home. I'll I'll eat it. That's it's it. like whenever when we're in the kind of funny office uh, physically. It's like whenever people would be like, hey, do you want to order some something off of uh, Uber Eats? Right? Do we want to get some delivery food? And it's like. Dude, on a regular day, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm, you know, getting squat and gobble or whatever that, that restaurant is that we usually get. But like, you know, if the company's paying for it, hey, you know, I'm yeah. all about it. Let's get some squat and gobble. Yeah. Um, to the, so we just answered Frankfurter's first question. I'm going to jump to the third question, which is, do we think the consoles will get delayed as well with all these game delays and with everything going on in the world? No, I think we, what we talked about, like launches, don't matter that much. What matters is being out at Christmas or being out for Christmas. I think this year is weird. So it's like, it's hard to say, you know, with certainty what will happen. I would, I think they are going to just go with it and get the boxes out there and get what they can get produced out there. So they don't have to worry about it later. So it's not a thing of they're waiting on a boat from china with a like with consoles on it to come to america because that could take three to four months to actually get here they are going to just put these things on the shelves and hope for the best i think people will understand this is not a wii u situation where they re- release a launch game then release nothing for for eight months mm-hmm. i think people will understand that there's not a ton of momentum coming out of these consoles but i think people will still want them and people are still going to go like okay maybe it's not a huge launch but let's just like it still has madden it still has the nba 2k it has all these games that we want so might as well just get this one also i think it might depend like this may be a weird thing to say because i don't want to insist that people are like using this money extraneously but i think if there's an extra stimulus package in the end of this year then i think that's going to help the new consoles quite a bit Mm -hmm. yeah i i think in terms of consoles being delayed, it is, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but very unlikely just because that's such a huge ship to move. You know, I think 
I think if we're in a situation where consoles get delayed, it would have to be a situation where both Sony and Microsoft either have conversations behind doors or like some kind of agreement is made that, hey, we're both shifting together. Like, I don't think you see one shift and not the other because like the, yeah. the, I, I think one, one company is going to get screwed in that situation uh, as far as like the, the long term implications of one new console being out and the other not. Yeah. Um, and I so like, if, I, if Sony had announced a delay six months ago, Microsoft would have been like right there, right on. Yeah, it. exactly. Especially with like Halo Infinite and like the, the developers, uh, probably wanting more delays than not at this point so they can actually yeah. have time to get their get their stuff finished uh but yeah i think it, i think it would take something like that like you gotta also think about how we have games that are coming out this fall for new consoles that are relying on on uh those consoles actually being out in the wild to sell their software right like if i know most of the indie games from the ps5 thing are coming out for both platforms ps4 and ps5 but like think about the games that are that are going to be exclusive to next gen that are planned for this fall or early next year right if the consoles get delayed that then means hey you're not getting your, your paycheck or whatever or like something or somehow down the line that is going to that is going to come back and affect you and it's like how many people like what what is the ripple effect if consoles somehow get delayed to let's say um like may next year like what does yeah. that do um and again i don't think it's impossible but it's just a very big ship to move that i don't know is worth moving it like i i think at this point you're just like hey let's release and what happens happens like we kind of got to roll with the punches yeah i think it's a weird year and they're everyone just has to like end up dealing with that and i think it's i i i could see games getting delayed but i don't see consoles getting delayed yeah and then to Frankfurter's second question here, uh, do the delays of all the recent games take pressure off consumers to buy on day one when there are a few new games to play with a new console? And I think the short answer is like, yeah. Yeah. Like it, if somebody's looking forward to Deathloop as the game to play at launch and Deathloop gets delayed, it's like, I guess I can wait to get the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like for us, it's our job to buy these consoles. But for you, unless you have like a really good reason to do it, and sometimes even just I want to own the new th new thing is a good enough reason. If that's it for you, go crazy. But the launch of a console is the worst it will be in terms of features and games, and the most expensive it will ever be. So mm. if if you don't have a good reason to buy at launch, then don't like yeah. don't don't feel pressure. Don't feel like you're don't feel the FOMO of like oh I wish I was playing this along with other people. Honestly, yeah. like there's not there's not really that game this time around. Even Miles Morales, that game will be just as good a year later if you buy it late, then. Exactly, I, right? It, like the PS5 is not necessary for you until you really want a game on it. Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to find a list of games that are coming out for the rest of the year. Um because like you said, right? There's not really the big like the big game I can think of that's coming out this fall is Cyberpunk and that's coming out for PS4 and Xbox 1. Right. There's yeah. not really an exclusive game outside of something like Spider-Man Miles Morales, which like, you know, exciting. I'm I'm very much looking forward to that game. I don't know if, if I was in a, if I was in a situation where I had to choose, hey, do I want to spend my money on a new PS uh, PS5 and Miles Morales or do I want to, you know, use money for other things, right? Like it's not it's not necessarily a dire situation, you know, of hey, I got to get these consoles out uh, consoles right away because again, looking at this list, right? There's Cyberpunk, there's Assassin's Creed, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I think is already out actually. Uh Tell Me Why, Wasteland 3, Marvel's Avengers again, current gen, Splunky 2, Crash Bandicoot, current gen, Watch Dogs Legion, current gen, uh, uh Dirt 5, you know, which is current and next gen, Godfall, but I don't know I don't know anybody who is like I'm gonna buy a new console for Godfall. Like Godfall <laughs> is a game that's gonna be there once you get a new console. It's the definition uh, of like this is the game that you like. Oh well, Deathloop was delayed. I guess I'll get Godfall. Yeah, and like you know, Outriders. And I think Godfall might be free to play now. That I think about it, and so like is that it? might just be. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say that because I'm I'm not positive. It might not be free to play. It strikes me as a game that maybe should be free to play. It, yeah. Is there a game that like an announced game that if that game gets announced for launch, you're like, oh yeah, for like put a, the job aside. If there was a game that this is announced for launch, it's okay. Yeah, no, I have to get it at launch because for me that game is Demon Souls. Oh yeah, I mean for me that game would be God of War too. It was something uh, of that look. Then yes, I have to get a PS5 at launch for God of War well, too. Like or like even games. like it was a Spider Man too. Of announced games, yeah. Um maybe horizon maybe like horizon forbidden west 
Yeah. But actually, no. Ratchet and Clank is a game I'm really looking forward to. Like for me, that is a game that I'm like, all right, I'm showing up at launch to play that game. If that game came out at launch. Yeah, I could see that. That game looks cool. Yeah. I'm, there's I'm not just... many of those though. Insomniac holding this launch up by themselves. For real, man. Sad to Insomniac. Uh, on the same topic, though, of delays, story number two, Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe has also been delayed. Uh, and this is gonna this is a quick one because it is literally just following up on the um, arcane uh, death loop situation. But they tweeted out uh, they tweeted out the delay in a funny way, where they tweeted out a screenshot that, or not even a screenshot, like basically a, an image that is the delay, like hey, the the letter to our community kind of thing. But for the image they tweeted out, I looked at it and I was like, this doesn't really, this doesn't scream Stanley Parable to me. And I read through it and I'm like, this looks familiar, but I don't know where this is from. <laughs> and basically they took, they, uh, they took what I believe is the Halo image for Halo's delay, I think. It could be something else too, but I'm assuming this is Halo. And they just replaced the text with Stanley Parable over like all the other mentions of the game. They did it for Halo and then they followed up with another one that was the Stanley Parable, or not Stanley Parable, the um, Deathloop uh, delay text delay image put put uh their game over it and basically just made a bunch of parody images of hey our game's getting delayed and so yeah stanley parable also delayed to 2021 they also said it was spider-man so maybe they're yeah. just anticipating a delay there but they've they've done a spider-man image as well yes and so shout out to crows 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 for being very funny um stanley parable deluxe coming 2021 looking forward to it that's not necessarily as uh i mean i'm excited for it but i'm not yeah. it's not like a in our conversation with console sellers it's not gonna be that necessarily for me um and it's coming out on ps4 anyway so yeah they didn't announce a delay for god I've... tokyo tokyo ghostwire but i don't know that they actually announced a date for that either so uh, for ghostwire tokyo yeah it... yes that was it i think they announced it for 2021 okay i think Maybe that game oh, yeah. was pushed, moved up or pushed further because of the the death loop delay. Who the knows? Death loop thing. Yeah. Who knows? That'd be an inter- that'd be an interesting one. Um, just like just to see how what what the time frame of it is. Like you don't want to necessarily see that come out the same day as death loop. I don't. I think that game is a lot further out than they think or they're saying because you don't have a creative director leave amongst very. I don't want to say suspicious, but like question make are raising circumstances and well, that game be exactly the same she came out and like she announced that she was like having a kid right like was right. I'm, i and i but assume she was, she was looking for work right after that thing though she was saying like hey if anyone has a work. thing like i i'd love yeah. to be a part of that i don't think i that does not answer that question i don't think okay interesting Let's get into story number three. Uh, Batman developer Rocksteady has been accused of failing to address sexual harassment. This is from Ethan Gotch at Kotaku. Female staff members at Rocksteady Studios, best known for Batman Arkham series, sent a letter to management back in 2018 complaining about sexual harassment, according to a new report by The Guardian. The letter, reportedly signed by 10 of the 16 women on staff uh, at the time, cited a number of persistent issues, including transphobic slurs, derogatory and sexually explicit remarks about women, and sexual harassment that included unwanted uh, unwanted advances, leering at parts of, of a woman's body, and inappropriate comments in the office, The Guardian reports. This misconduct reportedly also filtered into Rocksteady's games, which include hypersexualized versions of Batman characters like Poison Ivy and Catwoman. According to one of the Guardian sources, to address the issues raised in the letter, Rocksteady held a single company-wide hour-long training seminar. Employees had to sign a statement confirming they had, per- they had participated in the training, but according to the source, nothing else appeared to be done to address the problems. Quote, it felt that it was just a way for them to cover their asses, uh, end quote, said the source. A spokesperson from Rocksteady told The Guardian in a statement, quote, from uh, from day one at Rocksteady Studios, we set out to create a place where people are looked after, a place fundamentally built on respect and inclusion. The statement went on, quote, in 2018, we received a letter from from some of our female employees expressing concerns they had at the time, and we immediately took firm measures to address the the matters that were raised. Over the subsequent two years, uh, we, have, we, have, we have carefully listened to and learned from our employees, working to ensure every person on the team feels supported. In 2020, we are more passionate than ever to continue to, to develop our inclusive culture, and we're determined to stand up for all our staff, end quote. Rocksteady reportedly called an all-hands meeting Thursday to specifically respond to the 2018 letter for the first time after it was contacted about these issues by The Guardian. 
There, the studio reportedly pledged to take further steps. Rocksteady did not immediately respond to a request by Kotaku for comment. Again, this is like this is this is kind of like the story of the industry at this point. Like we've been talking about this for weeks and months and years on end. Um, but yeah, this is like this this is one of those ones where I'm like, all right, cool, do better. Like you know, I ten out of sixteen of the women on staff like signing the letter to be like, hey, yeah, it's shitty here. Like that is a that is like a damning number. Yeah. One because that's not that many women that that are working at your huge studio, but then also like that is most of them that, ha- that yeah, have this thing to say. I saw either in this story or another one, but they mentioned that the women who were complaining about it didn't just didn't leave because they were told they wouldn't get credit for Justice League or not just like a uh, Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Like that just that seems like it's a incredibly fucked up scenario all around. Yeah. So I don't know. It's not like like. I'm, I say, when I say it's not shocking, it's not that I think Rocksteady is inherently bad or anything, but like this games industry needs to do better. Yeah, it's a regular story in the in the industry. Like reading this, it's like I'm not shocked by it, right? I'm shocked by it in the sense of, man, how dare we allow this happen in the industry? But I, I'm not shocked by it in the sense of, yeah, this is a regular thing that happens in the industry. Uh, and it's it's always kind of hard to wrap our mind around it around it from the outside looking in because so much of this has to do with culture right so much of this has to do with how are you creating an environment that is good for everybody to work at right how are you creating an environment that doesn't suck to work at if you're a woman or if you're a trans person or if you're you are whoever um and like yeah like just doing i i feel like the training thing is kind of a standard response for big corporations like i can't tell you how many times at previous jobs where I like had did whatever training, right? Sexual harassment training via like an online portal that took mm. five minutes to do. And it's like, all right, cool. That that's how we're handling this as a company is that we're giving you this thing to uh, to take for five minutes. Boom. Like we dust our hands off. We've watched, we've done what we what we what we can do uh, as a company. Like it's not it's it's not enough, right? You gotta hire people. Uh you gotta change you the gotta, culture, which is just extremely hard to do. Yeah, you got to change the culture, which starts kind of starts from the top down, right? Like you got to make sure the people that you're hiring and like the people at the top are enforcing enforcing that stuff, right? Making sure that people aren't doing these shitty things, right? Like in the in the in the article, like you got to make sure people aren't talking shady about women or making uh, transphobic comments or like you know staring at women in ways that are inappropriate. Like you got to make sure that stuff is enforced, and that comes from the top down. Yeah. So, story number four. Uh, the Apple versus Epic saga continues. Uh, this comes in the form of an article from Rebecca Valentine of GamesIndustry.biz, where she writes about how Apple is terminating Epic developer accounts and tools access. Apple is preparing to terminate all developer accounts and cut off iOS and Mac development tool access from Epic Games, following a growing legal conflict between the two tech giants over revenue share and platform policies. In a tweet today from the from the official Epic Games news account, the company said it was filing a motion for a temporary restraining order against Apple to prevent it from cutting off its development access, which Apple apparently plans to do on August 28th. In, in its notice, Epic att- attests that this action by Apple would cause irreparable harm to Epic, including cutting off future development and updates on Unreal Engine for the platform, preventing developers making preventing developers making apps on Unreal from having access to newer versions, forcing them to move to other engines. The motion also moves to prevent Apple from delisting Fortnite from the App Store, an action that the iPhone maker already took last week. The conflict between Epic and Apple kicked off last week when Epic Games implemented a payment option in Fortnite on the App Store and Google Play, bypassing the store payment payment methods and allowing users to pay, pay Epic directly while offering a discount for doing so. Apple has responded with a statement, quote, the App Store is designed to be safe, to be a safe and trusted uh, place for users and a great business opportunity for all developers. Epic has been one of the most successful developers on the App Store, growing into a multi-billion dollar business that reaches millions of iOS customers around the world. We very much want to keep the company as part of the Apple developer program and their apps on the store. The problem Epic has created for itself is one that can be easily remedied if they submit an update of their app that reverts it to comply with the guidelines they agreed to and which which apply to all developers. We won't make it an exception for Epic because we don't think it's right to put their business interests ahead of the guidelines that protect our customers, end quote. And Ron, I know for a fact that you've been following this saga. What is your take on it and on these latest developments? 
never underestimate Apple's ability to make just the completely worst decision. Mm-hmm. Like this was this was a thing that should have gotten just handled by a settlement between the two or like in the courts if they really wanted to push it that far. This is them going nuclear in a way that complete like whether or not you think Apple or Epic is wrong or Epic got Apple <laughs> Epic is wrong or <laughs> Apple is wrong then this was the just a bad decision regardless of which way you think it should go. This was a way that like they they've now put pushed a button that can't be unpushed because if they don't go through with this, then they look weak and then they're going to have to make an exception. If they do go through with it and they kind of prove Epic's point that yeah. they are this walled garden that they have is just a maybe not monopolistic in the sense of like the legal definition of it, but mm-hmm. in a way that like legislation will eventually have to catch up to. And this is a good thing to point to from like Epic's perspective of, hey, look at what they're doing. The second they feel like they don't want us involved in their or we're not hewing to their rules or whatever, they're just cutting us off completely. The Major problem for Apple here. Let's assume that they do go through with this, which I maybe they will, maybe they won't. But let's assume that they do. Unreal is an engine that is supported on iPhones, and it's supported in a way that like Epic needs access to those developer tools to continue making that engine work. Right now, everything that works like it's not going to be a kill switch that the second uh, all the dev tools get cut off, everything will stop working. Mm. But if iOS changes something, which happens all the time, like a game starts crashing because there's a fundamental change in iOS or even like a small thing, Epic needs to be able to make those adjustments to the engine. And thus every game that isn't, or that is on Unreal Engine on iOS becomes hard to use because of Apple's, Apple's decision here, which makes it so, okay, so they kept a 30% from these places, but now places are abandoning them in mass or choosing not to be a part of Apple Arcade or whatever because they became part of a crossfire in a billionaire slap fight. Yeah. This has been very fascinating to watch uh, from almost like the chess move aspect of it. It very much seems like both companies are being very strategic and playing chess with each other. And I, I feel like Epic is kind of playing the better game here, but we're going to see how this ends up because like between the two, right? Apple is kind of in the in the position of power here in terms of, you know what what they can do and how they can maneuver like at the end of the day epic did kind of say yes to those guidelines right when they put their game on game on the store but those guidelines are shitty uh i remember uh, so on one of my previous episodes of kfgd like i i kind of went off about pro consumer versus anti-consumer and how companies aren't really companies aren't your friends right like it's it's hard for me to really root for one billion dollar corporation over the other and i kind of don't i'm not really taking sides in the fight though i am i will take a side in the sense that i think at the end of the day if epic gets what epic wants that is going to be better for the the industry at large yeah uh, because that, that is going to mean like better payouts for developers it's going to mean like you know that that's going to mean in the spirit in, in the spirit of the word mo- monopolistic right apple's not going to be able to have that power anymore uh, over developers and, and 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 what they dictate be on their app store or not, um, especially given that their 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 app store is the only way that you can have games and apps on their platform. Um, right. So to see that stuff open up, I think is going to be great if Epic is gonna, is able to have their way. Yeah, that's the thing that gets lost in this discussion is that like, yes, Epic's motivations aren't great, and Tim Sweeney actually fucking subtweeted me about this, which is hilarious. I saw this. But- yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, but their motivations are their motivations are for self benefit. But the end result would actually be better for everyone who was. It'd be Apple. great. Like, if we're being if we're being completely honest about this, right? And I and I think like as a corporation, you can do both things, right? As as Epic, you can do both things. You could make you could be making this move because you're like, hey, we're gonna make way more money if we're able to like break down the barrier of the thirty percent and like charge people directly in our in our app and bypass bypass the app store in that way like that is gonna be that is gonna be very beneficial to epic in the short run and in the long run but also that's gonna be beneficial to everybody like everybody yeah. everybody who is not apple that is gonna be very beneficial to you um and so i think you could be doing it in a way well 
I think Epic sees the fact that what they're doing here is good for everybody and they're taking advantage of that in their marketing and in the way they are trying to hashtag free Fortnite and all this stuff, right? Like it they're very they they're very aware of what they're doing and how they're doing it. And honestly, I I respect the chess game portion like aspect of it. I respect how they're approaching the situation and being like we can get people on our side and if we get enough people on our side we can break these walls down um but yeah like it is it, there are those two sides of it i i think it's impressive the way they did that i think it also kind of sucks because like they're weaponizing a an army of children really to yeah, like much. attack apple and like there was a very specific point in the blog post they made about it where they linked the apple uh, uh, the app store twitter account and that to me is saying they know people are going to add that account and they're going to like harass that account. And they think oh, yeah. that's a, a, they believe that weapon is a useful tool in their scabbard. And I think that kind of sucks. Well, we talked, we talked about this a little bit uh, when this was first starting to happen, right? When, when Epic first uh, bypassed Apple's, uh, uh, I keep wanting to call it the Play Store because they have Android mm-hmm. and I know it's just called the App Store. When they bypassed the App Store, right, and started, started to do their thing. Me, I think both me and Greg, or it might have just been me, were like, hey, they can't, if a- Apple can't like get rid of Fortnite, right? Because that'll cause a huge stir and that'll cause basically an army of people to stand up and be angry and, and, and get mad. And as soon as they did, I was like, huh. And very, like, very, you can very, very easily see that Epic do that as well because immediately they did the 1980 Fortnite thing. Immediately they went to the game, did the event. And of course, like, Who's playing their game? A bunch of kids, a bunch of adult, adults too. But like, you know, they they are they are weaponizing their audience in a way that, on one hand, I get why they do it because that is gonna what what is gonna allow them to win, right? Getting as many people upset about this as possible. On the other hand, yeah, it's kind of like oh, like you're you're making like teenagers fight your battles for you with 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 like doing the hashtags and having this be in game and all that yeah. stuff. Like part of it is kind of gross, but hey, entertaining to watch to say the least. Like. <laughs> I'm, uh, it, I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out. Uh, because I, yeah. on one hand, I do want Epic to win this battle, uh, this, yeah. so that this, we can get the benefits of that. This was kind of boring up until Epic did. Uh, uh, I keep doing that up until Apple did this move, and I think this move is going to be like, oh, you ex- you escalated this into a situation that is not going to end well for all parties when it yes. could have easily been like one that they had to settle and just been fine with. Yes. So we'll have to stay tuned and see. I'm sure there are going to be, new, going to be more Epic versus Apple news stories to come in Kind of Funny Games Daily in the next weeks and the next weeks to come. I think I said that right. Story number five. A Firewatch movie is in the works. Again, this is from Mia Galupo at Hollywood Reporter. Snoot Entertainment, the indie production banner behind features like Blind Spotting and Little Monsters, is partnering with indie video game developer Campo Santo for a feature film adaptation of Firewatch. Set in the Wyoming wilderness in 1989, the story centers on a fire lookout named Henry, connected via a handheld radio to his supervisor, Delilah. Henry ventures from his mountaintop, or yeah, from his mountaintop into the unknown terrain below, uncovering clues about a mysterious occurrence while facing challenging personal choices. The critically acclaimed game was released in February 2016, which, man, that was a long time ago. It feels like that game came out yesterday. This game came out four years ago uh, and has since sold over 2.5 million copies. Firewatch was previously being developed by Good Universe, but when the company sold to Lionsgate, the right the rights reverted back to Campo Santo. Imran, does this strike you as something that's exciting? Are you into Firewatch at all? I played the game. I don't remember much about it, but I played it. I The only thing that's interesting to me about this really is that so the the movie rights were from, at Good Universe reverted, or the company was sold to Lionsgate, reverted back mm-hmm. to Campo Santo, which I assume means that Valve owns the rights now. I thought so, about that, and I have no idea how that works. So, yeah, so I guess this is the first Valve produced movie, or not produced, but like Valve licensed movie. In a way, like yeah, it's weird that it wasn't Team Fortress. Yeah, I, I feel like Team Fortress or, would have been like the the first one, or Half like Half Life or, Portal, or yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. So I I I love uh love Firewatch. I I'm kind of on the team of why do we need to make movies out of everything? That said, like a Firewatch movie, I guess could be cool, but do we really need a Firewatch movie? Like when I, I think would... of the story of Firewatch, I think of the game, right? Like that was a narrative game, and so do I need that narrative told me in a, in a different way? That's kind of where I'm at. 
I would watch a Firewatch Pixar short. Like, for sure. Yes. That would be the way I'd want it. Yes. Some, something tells me that this is probably going to be live action, which I am not looking forward to. Yeah. A live action Firewatch seems like a thing that would be like, I would look at it at Netflix and then a trailer would start playing and I would just move on to the next thing. Like, yeah. not that it's bad. It's just like, I don't know, I'm not ready to commit to this for the next two hours. And Ron, this is the part of the show where I'd usually be like, oh man, I'm excited for the next Firewatch movie, but it's so far away. But before I do that, I want to tell you about our sponsor. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, this episode of kind of funny games daily is brought to you by DoorDash. Between never ending laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. DoorDash is the app that brings you the food you're craving right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new contact list delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, Australia, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. Let me tell you, I am a big user of DoorDash. Ever since uh, quarantine started, I, one, I'm going to be honest, I got a little bit lazy. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm sad all the time. Do I really want to spend my time cooking when I could be spending that same time napping? No, I'm going to order some DoorDash, take a nap, wake up to food, food that is sat right outside my front door. And let me tell you, man, it's been a great experience. Uh, they have like the, they have basically like a premium version of DoorDash, which lets you bypass like delivery fees. It's awesome. I've been getting a lot of sushi lately, and oh man, there's nothing like sushi delivered right to your door. Let me tell you, DoorDash is amazing. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code GAMES. That's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code GAMES. Don't forget, that's code GAMES for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. Imran. We talk about chicken sandwiches pretty much every time on this show. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't bring up chicken sandwiches this time around. I skipped the. I I was gonna talk about the chicken sandwich part in the uh uh in the ad because that's what we have written down here. But one, I was like, oh, I can actually talk about this one. But then two, sadly enough, right? They mentioned Popeye's chicken sandwiches. They don't mention the Jollibee's chicken sandwiches, which is the one we should be talking about on this show because it is the superior chicken sandwich. <laughs> that's right. I said it. No, we, we've we've. I was gonna say we had this argument, but it wasn't really an argument. It was just us talking about chicken sandwiches that are good. Oh yeah, all chicken sandwiches are valid in some way. Just some are better than others. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm a phony here, right? Like I'm, 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 I'm doing what I hate when people do this, right? I'm not, I've not actually had the Popeye's chicken sandwich, so I'm gonna come out and be honest. I've not had it, but I have had the Jolly Bee's chicken sandwich, and I will say it is the best chicken sandwich that I've had. It's very hard for me to believe that a Popeye's chicken sandwich could take that thing out. Am I right, Kevin? Uh, you can try and go to Popeyes or what's up? I can, I, dude. I'll hit up. We should actually make this into a thing. We go to we go to Popeyes. We go to Jollibee's. We have a taste test because I, I, see which I one just, is better. Last week we talked about it, and I actually went to yeah. Jollibee's after after whatever same here. Show. Oh, nice, good job. Yeah, and uh, yeah, man, those yum burgers you. are delicious. You know what I mean? They're nasty and dude. they're good. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, Imran. I'm really excited to see when we do this Jollibee's versus uh, Popeyes chicken sandwich taste test but that is probably so far away if i want to know what's coming out to mama grab shops today where did i look the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games that we show host each and every weekday yeah. Yeah. today it's a really awesome release day let me tell you uh rogue legacy 2 is out today for pc i didn't Middle realize that holy shit yeah i'm gonna, I'm right? gonna buy rogue legacy 2 today <laughs> I'm going to wait for it to come to Vita because that is the only correct place to play Rogue Legacy. Uh, Manifold Garden is out today on Xbox One and actually out today also on Switch as they announced during the Nintendo uh, Indie World. Even the Ocean is out today on PS4. Death and Request 2 is out for PC. Pathfinder Kingmaker is out for PS4 and Xbox One. Helheim Hassle is out for Xbox One, Switch, PC, and Mac. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is out for PC. That got a 10 out of 10 from IGN, yeah. and so I might be checking that one out it's even though I have a... Was that one of the best rated games of the year so far? Yeah, like, I think which is two wild. Or three, yeah. Uh, I I I realized recently that I think I might have a fear of heights because I watched a video <laughs> on Twitter that absolutely terrified me of 
uh there was a there were people who were like crossing a bridge in, in in chicago and the bridge got lifted as they're crossing so they're caught at the top of it when it lifted and like they're like recording on their phone like having a good time they're like oh we got we got trapped by the bridge right at the top and like looking down and being like oh look how high up we are i watched that video and i i've never had such chills like feed through my body in a way where i was like i could never be in that situation because i'll pass out immediately uh that said microsoft flight simulator might be my my way of conquering that fear <laughs> you know face it head on fly the skies bing maps you know all that good stuff mortal shell is out today on ps4 xbox one okay, pc good. uh and that i have that downloading as we speak and i cannot yeah, wait to jump same. into it my universe my baby is out for switch <laughs> Paper Shakespeare, The Legend of Rainbow Hollow is out for PC. Fishhead Blueprint is out for PC. Ke and then uh, Kingdom of Heroes, Tactics War is now, now available on iOS and Android. New dates for you. Uh, Deathloop and Stanley Parable, of course, have been delayed to 2021. Uh, out September 3rd, The Furious Wild is the first expansion for Total War Three Kingdoms, introducing four new factions and an extension to the sprawling map of third century China. And then Hypnospace Outlaw is coming to Nintendo Switch for is, is coming to Nintendo Switch, Xbox Game Pass, and PS4 on August 27th. And then I, I have a Nintendo Indie World wrap up here for you uh, for new. Before dates. we do that, blessing, do we? Mm -hmm. As you you as host, you make the call. But people have told me that the trailer for My Universe, My Baby, is extremely cursed. Kevin, so we need we, a, we need to pull up the trailer for My Universe, My Baby, because I gotta know what that's about. All right, but you know we. We got we got some stuff as to do afterwards. You know what I'm saying, my dude? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. I'll just skip reader mail. It's fine. All right. My my. What is this? What, what's it called? My, my universe, universe, my baby. Yeah. Because I I want to know what this is about. As you're pulling that up, though, I'm gonna go ahead and do the wrap up for Nintendo Indie World. Uh, Hades is coming to Switch Fall 2020. Spirit Fair is out later today. Garden Story is out 2021. Uh, Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero is coming out to Switch early 2021. I guess I should say all this is for Switch. Takeshi and Hiroshi is out later today. Raji and Epi and an ancient epic is out later today, and that one actually looks really cool. Bear and Breakfast is out in 2021. A Short Hike is coming to Switch for, uh, later today. And A Short Hike, really cool game. You should check that one out. Card Shark is out. Uh, is coming out in 2021. That's a game where you play uh, cards, but you're like a cheater. You're, you're doing the hustling. It's like Drake and Josh in that episode where they're playing pool. And like Drake kept acting like Josh wasn't like a boss in pool. And then kept ra racking up all the money. It's like that, but for cards and on the Switch. Torchlight Three is coming Wait, out is this, this fall. Is this is my? This just says my baby. This might be something else. No, my uh, universe. Yeah, no. This my universe, right. my baby. Oh, that, okay, that looks right. Yeah. All right, let's 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 see what this is about. Microids. So you gotta you gotta picture a baby. You gotta picture another baby. Take care of your oh, own yeah. baby. Take care of your own baby. It's like Nintendo dogs, but for babies. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> no, yeah, this is extremely cursed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like it's this all. at all. I don't <laughs> so you're basically just taking care of a baby. I don't like this. Make your, Make your okay. baby. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Customize. We're looking at baby customization here. So, this seems very pure and very like genuine. It's, it's pure in like the worst way. Yeah, but like ah. it, my universe. Oh, okay. So it's like my baby developed by like my universe. I guess I don't know. I I don't know how I feel about that. Because no. again, it's it's pure and it seems like it seems genuine in heart and it seems like a good hearted game, but it's off putting a bit. Yeah, you know? no, that is it's the uncanny valley of babies. I don't want gamers taking care of babies. I'm, just, I'm, I'm joking. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's that. That's a it, it is an uncanny valley of babies kind of thing. And I don't know how I feel about a babies Nintendo dogs ba <laughs> kind of kind of thing. N Nintendo babies. Uh, Torchlight 3 is coming out this fall. Uh, like I said earlier, Manifold Garden is out later today. Evergate is out later today. And then Untitled Goose Game Co-op Update is coming out September 23rd. Usually this is where I'd get into reader mail, but 
we had questions during the show and we're running late. And so I'm going to take the question that we have right now for reader mail. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to place it in the post show. If you want to watch the post show now, it's time to squat up. Jeffrey P long wrote in with a squat up on PlayStation and said, Hey guys, I need help on bloodborne. I'm playing, to, I'm planning on running through the chalice dungeons over the next couple of weeks. And I'll love it. If some best friends join along for some jolly cooperation. Thank you. Uh, you can add Jeffrey P long on PlayStation with the username Jeffrey P. Long. That is Jeffrey spelled J E F F R E Y P. Long. Play some Bloodborne Chalice Dungeons. Uh, now it's time for kindofunny.com slash you're wrong. Rewrite in. Let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. Nana Boz writes in and says Halo Infinite was delayed last week. Of course, time's a flat circle. And so I can never tell what happened last week and what happened in January because those are like the same things for me because I've been home. For for what seven months, six mm-hmm. months, I've been home forever, and every day looks the same, guys. It's getting it's getting dire right here. It's only been uh, like five months, but it feels like twenty. It feels like eight years. Uh, Zyger says, "Bless is wrong. The Popeye's chicken sandwich is amazing. Best chicken sandwich. Bless, you need to try it." Listen, I'm not saying it's amazing. All I'm saying is that the Jolly Bee's chicken sandwich changed my life when I bit into it. Frankfurter says, "Rogue Legacy is in early access today." Yeah, so it's out. You can buy it. It's just not a full, complete game. Wit says Ghostwire Tokyo was announced for 2021. Okay. Uh, Nanobot says, regarding Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red posted an update saying they weren't happy with Melee Combat and they were fixing it. I remember I was listening to um, KFGD on Friday where they mentioned that. And I don't know if they're going to delay the game like just based on that. But, of course, yeah, they're still working on things. And so we'll see. We oh, shall summer see. Day, yeah, Summer Games Done Quick is going on. Go go back to last night and watch the Hollow Knight run, the Hollow Knight race. It's actually really amazing. And then Nanobot just says, Blessing, the term you're thinking thinking of where you fake out someone by, ta- by, by talking down a skill to make money is hustling. Did I not say hustling? I thought I said hustling. You said hustling, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drake was hustling people with Josh and Card Shark. You are just cheating at cards. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're correcting me that like in Card Shark, you're not a hustler. You're not doing like the oh. Drake thing. Yes. You are just cheating at cards. But, like, isn't... Uh, okay. See, we don't know the full plot to Card Shark yet, is what I'm going to say. You could be talking... You could, like, you could be talking down somebody, right? Like, you could be like, oh, yeah, I suck at cards. I'm terrible at cards. Uh, and then, like, when, when the game actually starts, you know, you're Gambit all of a sudden, and you're doing your, your, your thing. I feel, like that, I, feel, I feel like that falls into the hustling criteria <laughs> i, lo- I love the idea of like you're gambit and so when you start losing at cards they just explode the table and leave you just start like murdering everybody with with, with cards <laughs> that you have at your disposal it's like i can't stay in this game ching, ching, ching. um yes so that has been kind of funny.com slash you're wrong tomorrow's hosts for kind of funny games daily are me and gary Wooda. that's right it's been a minute since i've hosted with the host of animal talking and talk guys which i think is his upcoming fall guys thing uh and so yeah join us tomorrow right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and on podcast services around the globe of course this has been kind of funny games daily each and every weekday live right here we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about we have a patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash kind of funny games so stick around for that otherwise until next time game daily <laughs>